Hi guys, it's me. Welcome back. If you are new here, please subscribe if you'd like. On this channel, we've been doing a series of makeup decluttering, and this will be the last video in that series. I'm usually a lot more entertaining, so if declutters and just seeing my hands are not your thing, totally understand. Check back next time for some more fun content. But if you're like just like me and you like to watch these things, you like learning about what other people like with makeup and what you might want to add to your collection you know, before you buy, then stick around. Uh, today I'm going to be doing all of my face products, whether that be powders, blushes, highlighters, bronzers, CCs, BBs, tinteds, face palettes, concealers, foundations, the whole nine. And to start off, we're going to go through my contour palettes. I don't have many because the ones that I have I like and I don't see a need to add more. I must say too, before we start this video, I've been on a no buy for the last like three or four months because it simply needed to happen. I got to the point where I was starting to realize that there's no way I only have one face. Not that there's no way that I only have one face, but there's no way I was going to use all of the makeup that I had. So with the exception of boxes, we've been on a, an indefinite no buy, no buy, which I plan to break in the month of February. And I've been doing so good because, you know, at night when you're just laying around and you really want to shop for some makeup. Yeah, me too. So we'll start off with this. This is the Park Avenue Princess Palette by Tarte. I love this palette. If you've seen my videos, you know I talk about it all the time. These two colors here, this one specifically for brightening. Oh, my Lanta. And this just for setting as a press powder. Beautiful. Bronzers are good. Not my favorite. As you can see, I haven't dipped into them nearly as much, but I would buy this again just for the colors. This is an awesome palette. If you're looking on the cheaper side of things, the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contour Palette, they did reformulize this. This is an old one, which is the better one, not to be biased, but I am. And this, I like both these shades. Both the bronzer and the highlight, the contour on this are awesome, and especially for the price point, it's like five or six dollars. It might be more now. Like I said, I bought this a long time ago. This one is the shade Dolce. The Tardis Pro Glow Palettes, I just love these. I think they're awesome to bring with you on a trip or something. So this is one of them, and I don't know which one, and it has the four highlighters, which are beautiful highlighters, but in the other one that I have, this one has the blushes, the highlighters, and these are powder contour. These run at like $45, and they last forever. I mean, it doesn't look like I've much used this, and my other ones, it totally has, and that's because these, you don't need much, and I would definitely recommend, recommend these. They're a good investment. And the last palette, you all know, is my favorite face palette of ever. I will buy this over and over again, and that is the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette. Did y'all see her company bought her out? She's going to move on to, like, vegan clothes and shoes and stuff, which, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I have some feelings on that. I love this palette. I got it at TJ Maxx for dirt cheap, and I will buy it for full price if I can't find another one. The, 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 they're pretty much done the colors that I liked. I don't even try to use those anymore. This one, I don't even really dive into. All the bronzing shades are great. This is a little dark for me. I've been working on this one, but this one was my favorite. This is the powder palette. This is great. If you're going to buy one thing from this video, buy this. I said that in my favorites, but I totally mean it, guys. Am I recording? Yeah, okay. I think we're going to do all the powders first, and then we'll move into the liquid things that I'm going to talk about today. Now let's move on to our setting powders. Oh my Lanta, there, this is excessive. I have a lot of setting powders and quite honestly, they dry my face out so I don't use a ton of them. These are the ones that I have though um, and I'm just going to run through them, th through them thick. No, quick. The Cover FX Translucent Setting Powder, this has major flashback. I used to think it looked so good on me until I got my picture taken at graduation and it was a scandal. It is not, I would not recommend this. So I received this little Kate London Extraordinary Translucent Powder and I thought that I liked it. It's like super finely milled, but it is so hard to use this tiny little thing. So I was really happy when I got it in a full size and I actually really, really enjoy this product. I think it's awesome. I'm going to hold on to this one definitely and get rid of some of these. Okay, moving on. I have a couple of the Makeup Forever mini sample sizes. Um, sample size in translucent powders is okay because you don't use a ton of it. But once again, it's just hard. I've it's hard to use. 
when they're in such small things because I like to dip my beauty blender in there. I've almost used this whole one and this is the one I'll be working on next. I actually really like the formula for that one. That's a good one. I received this in a glossy box, I believe. It is the, the pr it's a pressed translucent powder, which was appealing to me. My nails are absolutely wretched. I'm sorry. I haven't used it yet, so I can't review it. Um, I'm actually trying to get rid of this, so there's that. I have two of these effect powders. I got these both in glossy box. I canceled and resubscribed to it like a sucker millions of times. And because I resubscribed in the middle of the month, they sent me two of the same boxes. Love that for me. So I have two of these and they're okay. I mean, they're not great, but they're all right. So I'm gonna get rid of one of those. This Luna by Luna was also sent to me in a box. As you can tell, I don't buy too much powders, translucent powders, because I don't use them, but they love to send you them in boxes. Um, this is super white. It makes you look like Casper, so no. I like this because it's a banana powder. I like banana powders under the eyes, and I like this product. Um, I don't even know who it's made by, but here it is, ladies and gentlemen. I did buy this one off Amazon. This was like my first setting powder I ever had, and this is the Aesthetica Translucent Powder. This baby's huge. I think it was like $25. I've had it for like a year still works fine this is my go-to powder like go-to go-to I'm also trying to use it because I've had it for so long so it's like I gotta use it um, but this stuff's great and it's an Amazon find and since I bought that on Amazon I've seen a couple of their products floating around but this brand's done me good so yeah 25 bucks for this big thing and it's I'd say it's more high-end than like RCMA's or you know stuff you find in a drugstore it's like a perfect middle so I go with that I've used the Laura Mercier one I don't think it's exceedingly better than any of these and it's super expensive so if you saw one in here that I liked and um, all of these are cheaper than Laura Mercier, don't buy that. Buy one of these. Buy this. These are my blushes. Okay. We'll start with this pretty vulgar and make them blush. Oh, come back here. I love this blush. I think it's beautiful. It's It blends really well. It's just like a very light touch. I don't like to go crazy with blush. Most of the time, I don't even really wear it. But if I'm going to, this is one of the ones that I reach to. Pretty vulgar. Makes some really good stuff. Another favorite of mine is the Tarte Blush and Quirky. I love this. They all, I've also used the one Party, I think it's called. And that's beautiful. Tarte makes great blush. We love Tarte on this channel. So if you like Tarte, subscribe. And if you are tart, um, let me get some free stuff or something for talking about you so much. These went crazy when they first came out. These are the Milani Coral, this is a Milani powder brush. This one's in Coral Cove. They come with this beautiful imprint on them. This color is just absolutely beautiful. When I'm trying to go a little bit deeper with blush, mostly when I'm doing looks for like Instagram or some sort of character, you know what I'm saying? Like when I'm doing my artsy makeup, I like to use this because it really pops. This is a Studio Makeup Lum Luminous Loose Powder Blush. I've never used this, so yeah, I've never used it. And a loose blush just sounds like pretty dangerous to me. It's just like all over the place. No. You know Physician's Formula does good in everything they do. This is a great blush. You can find it at the drugstore. Physician's Formula, it's it. I need to get more butter bronzer. I've wanted to for like months now, but the no buy, you know, I'm dedicated. So this is good. Get this. Okay, this note blush, um, I got this sent to me too, and I mean, it's not terrible, but I never reach for it. As you can tell, you can still see most of the imprint on it. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I'm probably going to get rid of that, actually. Definitely getting rid of this. It's a real herb, be fearless, be limitless. I liked it because it's got some like luminous shades in it, but the quality of this product is just like really not to par, so we're, we're tossing that to the side. I just got this Kat Von D eyeshadow blush duo. It's way too dark for me. It's way too dark. I do not like this shade. This has got to go. The Gigi Gorgeous blush. I love Gigi Gorgeous. Anyone watch her or just me? I love her and I, I love her channel and I love the colors of this blush. I don't have any luminous options of blushes that I enjoy. So having this allows me to do a little of both, you know, just like double dip in both and it gives you a tiny bit of sparkle. This product, I love. I love this product. And the last thing is the Saharian Blush Volume 2. I got this on Ulta because simply it has every blush, no matter how you're feeling. A little spunky, you want a little shine, a little dark. I don't know what the hell you do with that. But um, 
this was on Ulta for like maybe twenty dollars honestly and it will last forever so if you're unlike me and you just have like one blush in your makeup bag this would be a better this would be a good investment because you can have a bunch of different choices and i like this quality and this was a first for me for this brand but i would suggest it and look how cute how cute these are my highlighters okay these are my highlighters let's talk about them the kate london confetti highlighter i tried using this the other day i i couldn't get any pigmentation out of it i am not going to be holding on to this um okay space case seen from space actually i don't know this this brand's been like popping up a lot lately and i have an eye thing by them that i really like this highlighter is actually pigmented really good my thing with highlighter is i'm not really the type that likes to glow to the gods i just like to have a little little tiny bit of shimmer okay and if i do want to glow to the gods i have a highlighter that i like to use so we'll probably pass it on which is this you know it it's the Ofra rodeo drive baby this stuff, I will always have one of these in my makeup collection. I will always, I repeat, I will always have one of these in my makeup collection. Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. This is a drugstore highlighter that is, you know, bronze colored. I like having a, a like gold highlighter because you can blend it with your bronzer pretty seamlessly. And if you're looking for a cheap, I think this is like three or four dollars, okay? This is definitely a product where you have to scrape the top layer off, but once you get through that, this is just a nice subtle bronzed glow and i love this stuff D dls i think stands for dirty little secrets baked highlighter i might have dipped into this once or twice but i never use it so it's gotta go too the daisy and pearl radiance booster i've never used either so oh do you see my cat okay that's fucking disgusting that's disgusting that's gross okay um so we're gonna get rid of that too because i've never used it there's no sense keeping it this i love this is the josie oh that looks cute that's my um stand i'm using for my ring light the josie moran argan enlightenment illuminizing veil let me tell you a little bit about this product here okay you can use this as a highlighter if you want it's super subtle though i love to just put this all over my face when i want to glow this is good stuff this is my only Josie Moran product, and I love it. This is good. This lasted me so long, too. I've had it for over a year once again. The Basic Beauty Highlighting Palette. I just got this in BoxyCharm. This stuff doesn't... It's, it's not a joke, okay? It It's shiny. It's really shiny, and it's really pretty. So, at first, I was like, no, I don't need any more highlighters. You know, Modest told me I'm going to get rid of it. But then I was like, I tried one shade. You see my swatch marks? And I was like, no, I'm keeping this. It's, like, so creamy. It, it's beautiful. This is beautiful. This is a good find. The Laura Geller Diamond Dust Highlighter. I just don't like it. I don't like a lot of Laura Geller products. I'm sorry. I've tried this before, the Manicadar Glow. It's super subtle. It really does nothing for me. I've only used it a couple times, so I'm going to be passing that on. This was a tr this is a True Glow Skin Illuminating Stick. Leave it to Glossy Box to send these like obscure, weird items. It's not even like a highlighter. It's like I don't even know. I don't even know what that is. It feels like chalk. It's it's going by. It's going by. This Kaleidoscope Astral Light Highlighter, it's just a color I would never use. I wouldn't use that. I've never used it. I'm not going to talk about it because I've never used it. Mimi Me Beat the Blues. I've dropped this under foundation a couple times for like an illuminated face, you know, a little Tim Man effect. And I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. I think you can definitely find better. And lastly would be the Tarte Tardius Pro Glow, which, you know, we love Tarte. If I'm going to reach for a liquid highlighter, this is going to be it. I, it's, I love the way this feels. I love laying highlighter over it, powdered highlighter. This is good stuff. It's good stuff. Okay, so when you're on a no-buy, it's like some things it's like that you don't use often, like, or that take a long time to use all of, like translucent setting powder, blush, highlighter, even contour palettes. They go so slowly that it's like, I still have a ton of them. But other products that you use a lot went faster. You know, they go faster. So the rest of the categories I have, I don't have a ton to talk about because I'm left with only a few options in each of them, which is a very good thing because that means I get to 
buy more because <laughs> I forced myself to use them. So let's start with bronzer, which is a really small collection right now. This is it for bronzers for me. First, we have the Trace Stick um, Stick Contour. I like this. Stick contour is not my preferred method, honestly. And when I do use it, I lay something over the top of it. It took me forever to realize there's a brush in here, and truthfully, I've never even tried it. Maybe I'd like this more if I did that. It's not a terrible product, but I, I could go without it and be fine. And then I also have the Laritzi one, which honestly, in my book, make, they're the same. They do nothing different for me. They, it works just as well. I think this is a bit cheaper, so if you do like stick contour, they both work all right for what they are, and this is definitely cheaper, so go with this one, because I really feel like they're the same thing. Next, I have the Morphe Powder Bronzer in Debutante. I hate this. I absolutely hate this. It, the color looks so good in the palette, but it's so patchy when it goes on, which I hate to say because I love Morphe, but I don't love this. I really don't. I'm trying to force myself to use it, but I think it's about time. I just let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. I bought this because it was all the rage. Hula, Benefit, you know, the whole nine. And I'm not really impressed. I would pick the um, Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer over this a hundred times over. It's not terrible, but it's not my favorite. It's really not. But I'm going to use the rest of it because this is expensive. All okay. right. It's very expensive. And it might, when I go back to buying so, so soon, a product I've been eyeing for so long is the Chanel Sol de Bronze. I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy that. It's the first thing on my list after this no buy. So I can't wait to talk about how I liked that. And the last thing this was sent to me in a box is the Lovecraft Beauty Bronzer. Honestly, I've never tried it. Let me know if you've tried this. If you, I know some of you guys watch my box reviews because you get some of the beauty boxes I get. So if you've tried this, let me know how you like it. And next we're to just face powders, like face powder foundations, I guess you could call them. I only have three and these two are almost empty. So we're ready to buy, baby. Buy, baby, buy. This is a Fit Me Man Poreless. You've heard about this if you watch any beauty gurus. This is like to the point of non-existence it's like gone i really like how this sits on the skin to me both this and the covergirl clean matte do the same thing i have this one a little bit darker of a shade which we'll talk about why here in just a minute but i've used pretty much all of both of those because i liked them and then my new favorite is the becca hydra mist set and refresh i like this because it's not translucent i don't put it with my translucent powders i think this just adds like if you're if you're you're dewy and you want to matte yourself, this is how you do it. This is it. This is the one. Becca's products have never let me down. They really haven't. So we love this stuff. Next. A big thing for me as of, I guess, like this past year was using BB cream, CC creams, and tinted moisturizer when I don't have a lot to do and I don't feel like doing my makeup because it lets you... To me, there's added benefits that foundation doesn't have, and it lets your skin have a moment away from, like, clogged pores and, you know, chemicals and whatever else. Sure, these probably have those in there, but, you know, I don't know. So, we'll touch on this right now. I was a heavy tanner from the time I was, like, 17 years old until probably I was 28. I'm 29 now. So, all the shades that I have and, like, foundations and stuff, I've been trying to make them work but none of them fit my new alabaster skin that you know the skin god blessed me with so a lot of these i simply just like i'm not gonna be able to use them until like summertime so i, I did my best on my no buy but i won't be able to use these this is the marcel cc cream i've never tried this it's so dark and it got sent to me in a box because my color was like so much darker than i was spray tanning like two or three times a week not anymore sweetie love the skin you're in that's a campaign for something. And same with the Maybelline Dream Fresh BB Cream. I read great things about this. That's why I bought it. But it doesn't do anything for me right now because I'm nowhere near that color. No, not at all. This was something I got tricked into buying because the internet told me it was great. This is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. And people love this stuff. So many people love this stuff. I hated it. I did not like it. Even when I matched it, I did not like it. Um, I think this was an expensive product that was a waste of money for me. Sorry, that's the truth. I'm not here to sugarcoat things or tell you, tell you to buy makeup that's, you know, expensive because someone's paying me to do it. And that's something you should get good out of this channel. 
this is a real girl's humble opinion and this stuff is not worth the coin however this is this is like my third tube of this this is the ramel bb cream nine in one it has sunscreen it's long lasting hydrates for 24 hours evens your skin cone skin cone skin tone and it it really does do all of those things i i wear this like five out of seven days a week i'm not joking and i get comments on what foundation are you wearing it's not baby it is bb okay it is bb and i just put like sometimes not even all the time i'll put a little bit of like face powder over it and it looks great that way or if i'm feeling a little crazy i'll just put a little bronzer and a little concealer this this is a look it's a look honey and this is cheap and it lasts a decent amount of time get this i'm telling you right now get this I never thought there would be a day I could hold all my concealers in one hand. And I just got this one sent to me this week. So, realistically, this was all we were working with before then. This is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Anti Age Waterproof Concealer. This is thick. This is thick and it's a warm medium. Because, once again, I was a lot darker then. But I still use this. I like to use this to set my um, like eye when I know I'm going to be going in with like a bold look because it'll keep it on all day because it's sticky and it's thick for an under eye i don't anti-aging is not a word i would use to describe this product and i won't be rebuying it but i'm going to finish using it even though i've lost the top and it is like so crusted and busted it's filthy there's a hair do you see it there's a hair okay the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer. I like this stuff. I got it in way too light. I'm still learning about my own skin. Okay, that's really light. And I love a lighter concealer than my foundation. And since most of my foundations are too dark for me right now, this brings me back, you know, bring it on back home. And I got this last week in BoxyCharm and I love it. It's the Pretty Vulgar Concealer. This color is perfect for me. I love the Dolphin Applicator, how it's perfect to just swoop under your eye. It works really well. It looks beautiful on the skin. I'm jazzed I've gotten this. Like I said, with the blush that I love from them, Pretty Vulgar is it's a good brand. It needs more recogni recognition than it gets. Let me grab my foundations, and that will be the last part of this video. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine foundations right now. And how many actually match my skin? Literally one, maybe two. <coughs> Ooh, I wonder how that sounded with the microphone. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Foundation. It is super light coverage. I am a cake girl. I do not like the, the light coverage, okay? Um, I appreciate it for what it's trying to do. This top is not conducive to anything. Look at all that stuff crusted on there that I'm going to put on my face next time. No, ma'am, I am not. Um, this was a whim buy at Walmart for me when my skin turned, started getting lighter and I was like desperately grabbing off the shelves to find something that worked. This is not it. This whole line by L'Oreal is great. The Pro Glow, the Pro um, Total Coverage, Total Glow, Total Matte. I used the whole tube of that one. Um, I love this stuff. The problem is it is totally not my skin color anymore. And so I'm going to save the... I literally have like this much left. But I'm going to save it for summer. I recommend this though. If you can get it in your shade, get it. However, if you're going to get the Total Cover one, make sure it matches your skin tone because this is Total Cover, just like it says. If you have fine lines and wrinkles it will settle in it no matter how much translucent powder you put in those cracks um this is it though this is good this is good and it does last um this is good i recommend that covergirl olay advanced radiance i think i had a coupon or something when i got this honestly and i'm i don't, I don't have anything to say about it because i've never used it because once again it is so freaking dark it's so dark the fit me dewy and smooth people love this stuff it oxidized like crazy on me i still try to use it i'm trying to finish it and this no buy i'm only like down to here okay so that's a lot more applications left but i didn't especially love it the anastasia beverly hills stick foundation i got this because it was on sale at target or tj maxx i'm sorry i found it for a deal or so i thought but mm, i think i paid 10 bucks for this and I was like, oh my god, an Anastasia foundation for $10? Count me in. I don't like it. I think it would look good on certain skin, but because it, it isn't, there's nothing inherently bad about it. It's just not the kind of foundation that I like. So we don't like that. Can you see a theme? I don't really like any of my foundations right now, or they don't match my skin. This is the True Match Lumi by L'Oreal. I 
thought I didn't like this, but I used it literally two days ago, and I loved the way this made my skin look. It was luminescent. I set it with a the Pixie Glow Setting Glow Spray and a little highlighter after that to like really stick to the skin, and that look was beautiful. So this matches my skin, and I'm excited to use it. The Tarte Amazonian Clay 12-Hour Foundation. This stuff is great. This is really great. I, I just wish it matched my skin. I should, a poem by Casey Rose. The Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. Um, this was like rated as like a really great drugstore foundation, but here's the downside. It smells like freaking paint. It smells like paint. It smells like you're painting your face, which I guess you kind of are, but it smells so much like paint that it's almost too much to get past it. But if you can, for the price point, this is a really good foundation. And I can make this work right now for my skin. So this is a go-to for me right now. Mm. The Stilla Stay All Day Foundation. It does stay all day. This is, guessed it, you guessed it. It's way too dark for my skin. But I'll save it for summer because I, I actually really liked this. And this is one of the first Stilla products I've ever tried. Next month in BoxyCharm, we are getting the Becca Foundation. And I am very excited because I ordered it in my new skin color, which is um, Ivory. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that. Anyways, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this little declutter. My makeup series has officially come to a close. I have a lot of hair care, a lot of skin care. I don't like my skin care supersedes my makeup collection by like at least double the size, I'd say. So if you're interested in that, let me know. We can do that. Um, thanks for watching every single part of the series. If you, to the few of that, you that did, that's awesome love you for that and i will see you hopefully tomorrow definitely tomorrow with a much more fun vid i think we're gonna test a diy rainbow face mask here at home and i'm gonna try maybe to get my fiance to do that with me so that'll be a lot of fun thanks for tuning in guys see you next time